Welcome to the Lawn Memorial Health System Sports Report. I'm Mark Coots. Andy Lynch is resting a scratchy throat this evening. Perhaps he lost in all the excitement of some great Thursday night girls basketball action. Highlights from all over the region. Plus, the OIO Prep Profile catches up with Ada's Matt Wilcox as he prepares for his senior swimming season. But we start on the hardwood with a showdown in the Northwest Conference. The Crestview Knights with an early half game lead on the rest of the NWC. Greg Rickard's team 2-0 in conference play, while Allen East and Bluffton, the other unbeaten league teams coming into tonight's action, both only have one league victory. Knights have won four in a row since falling to Van Wert in the championship game of the tip-off tournament as they entertain Delphus Jefferson this evening at Ray Etzler Gymnasium, a game you'll be able to see on at WOSN tomorrow night. Pick up the action with the Knights. Emily Bauer inside to Kirsten Hicks finds Mackenzie Riggenbaugh. Eyes it flies at three. It's a good part of a 7 0 run for the Knights. More from Bauer. Top of the key. Drives baseline. Gets the shot to fall. Jeff Kess come back. Brooke Culp over to Katie Gergens. Deep three as Jefferson finally gets on the board. Lady Knights Kenneth Mercer dishing to classmate Lindsay Motika. Stores the bucket. Eight points for Motika on the night. Other end, Gabby Pimpus right back to Riley Stockwell drives baseline, but not enough as Crestview gets the win over Jefferson 52 to 31. Bauer finishing the night with 16 points, eight rebounds, and five blocked shots. Staying in the NWC, Bluffton's Olivia Hunt, nine of the Lady Pirates' first 12 points, leading Lincoln View in the second quarter. Lancers Hannah McCleary hands off to Claire Clay. Elbow jumper is good. Lancers down by one, 12-11. Other end. Lady Pirates running the pick and roll. Hunt to the rolling Andy Schmutz. Gets the bucket. Three-point lead for the home team. More from Bluffton. Sarah Schreiner. Hashtag eyes it flies at three is good. 17-11 Bluffton in front. Lady Pirates on a roll in the third quarter. Bailey Pritchard finds Hunt. Hits the corner three. 22-11 Hunt with a dozen points. Paige Broker inside to Pritchard. Finds room. Draws the foul. It's a 10-point lead for the home team late in the quarter. Broker inside of Sammy Frucci, back to the driving broker, lays it in. 25-13, Bluffton up, and they go on to win 52-42. Kaylee Thatcher leading the way for the Lancers with 18 points. Sarah Schreiner high for Bluffton with 17. Taking a look at this weekend's rebroadcast games, as we'll get to that WOSN Buckeye Insider QP Orange Bowl trip later. But right now, do we have the full screen with the rebroadcast games starting tomorrow night at 7? There we go with Jel Delphus Jefferson taking on Crestview with our friends at WKSD on the call. Then seven more boys games coming up this weekend, including Finley at Lima Senior, Friday night at 10.44 on WTLW, right after the sports report. Meanwhile, in WOSN, it's a Western Buckeye League contest. Salina traveling to Ottawa Glandorf. That one will start at 11. Saturday, catch the rebroadcast of the Liberty Benton Arlington game at 7, followed by Shawnee and Van Wert. 10.30 Saturday night on TV44. We've got St. Mary's and Marion Local, while Macomb and Continental is the 11 o'clock game Saturday night on WOSN. And finally, on Sunday at 8.15, it's Allen East and USV. Of course, full schedule available online at WOSN.TV. We'll leave it with their first loss of the season last Saturday to Lima Senior. The LCC T-Birds off to a fantastic start. 6-1 on the season, led by Meredith Shepard and Madison Stolle. Shepard, the senior, averaging close to 18 points a game, while Stolle, just a freshman, right behind her, over 16 points a night. T-Birds back on the road tonight, facing Columbus Grove. The Columbus Grove Village Green, always so beautiful at Christmas time. Third quarter, Bulldogs up by two. Off the miss, Sammy Steckschulte gets the rebound and lays it in. 37-33, home team leading. More from Grove. They work it to the corner. Rachel Shoemaker hits the three-pointer. 40-33, Columbus Grove in front. LCC comes back, though. Kayla Verhoff comes up with the steal and then lays it in. Cuts the lead down to a five. More from the T-Birds as Madison Stolle drives baseline, misses, but Sydney Moeller is there for the putback. 40-37 LCC trailing. Grove, Shoemaker drives and finishes back up to a five-point lead, but LCC starting to take control late in the third quarter on the fast break. Verhoff would lay it in, bringing LCC within a three. More action from the third quarter. Sydney Santaguida. Skip past the Shepherd eyes. It flies at three is good as LCC takes the lead in the fourth quarter. But in a game of runs, the Bulldogs have the final run. And Columbus Grove on a strong defensive effort in the fourth quarter wins 58 to 57. Shepherd had 17 points for LCC, while Rachel Shoemaker and Jade Clement leading the way for Columbus Grove with 13 points apiece. 
Tonight, Ottawa Glandorf looking to bounce back from a tough loss against a strong Liberty Benton team on Tuesday. After starting the season 3-0, OG has dropped two of their last three as they hit the road tonight to face the line of Bulldogs, still looking for their first win of the season. OG shuffling up the starting lineup a little bit tonight. First quarter action. Kelly Stahl with the blockaroni and cheese for the home team. Ottawa Glandorf staying at it. Aaron Basinger to Jill Rosslett inside for the hoop and the early lead. Dogs come right back. Heather Hybe kicks to Jenna Berry. Long two-pointer. We are tied up at two apiece. Blue and Gold go back inside of Rosalay. Putting OG back in front. Salina hanging in there. Stahl hitting the glass. Gets the rebound and the putback. More from the home team. Leah Bin firing away. Puts Salina in front. But OG comes back. Nice runner by Kristen Miller. Tying the game up as OG would go on and get the victory on the road. 67 36 is the final score. More from the Western Buckeye League. Sean A hosting Van Wert. Off the inbounds pass. Quick passing by the Lady Cougars. Ball gets back to the inbounder. Aaron Morrow Jr. finishes with the lay in for the visitors. Van Wert looking inside. And then it's Rachel Evans with the corner three. More from Evans. Dribbles left. Stops and pops. Lady Indians up five to four. Aaron Morrow continuing with a strong game for the Cougars. Gets the rebound pivots. Goes back up strong with it. And then Shawnee's Danielle Hughes long pass ahead to Claire Dalkey. Dalkey gets the shot up and in as Van Wert would get the win on the road. Post victory for the Cougars, 67 to 63. More from the Western Buckeye League, Wapakoneta hosting Elida. Bulldogs working inside to Tori McAdams. Gets the hook shot to fall. As Elida grabs the early lead. Wapak's Carly Buzzard decides to shoot it. Hits the corner jumper. Sabrina Klein, big night for her tonight for Elida. Three of her team high 11 points. Bulldogs playing some good defense too. Ashley Lowry comes up with the steal. Lowry going coast to coast, gets the contact, makes the bucket, but too much from Wapakoneta. Maddie Stiles dishes to the junior. Megan Watt eyes it, flies it, gets the three to fall thanks to the hometown rims as Wapakoneta gets the win 55-42. Watt finishing with a game high 18 points. Sarah Warner adding 14 in the victory. Monday night on WOSN, the debut of our new series, Throwback 44, as we dip into the archives and read our classic high school basketball games from the past. We'll start with a 15-year-old game. A good rivalry then, as it is now, Elida and Ottawa Glandorf. Now, all winter long, we'll feature a new classic game every week, highlighting some of the unforgettable contests we've broadcast over the last quarter century, including awesome playoff games and some of the greatest high school players to ever walk on the court in the state of Ohio, plus new interviews with those who played, coached, and covered these classics every Monday night this winter on WOSN. We're going to keep things right here for right now. St. Mary's has had a golden megaphone already this school year, and they want to get it again. Riders out to the lead in our Lee Kinsel Fans of the Week contest. Van Buren sitting in second place. New Knoxville checking in at third. Still time for those schools and for Salina to get into the race as well. Voting, of course, closes Saturday at 5 p.m., so log on to WOSN.TV to cast your ballot. We'll announce the winner on Saturday's Sports Report. Great event coming up December 22nd at the Shawnee Alliance Church. It's the Retneck Christmas Extravaganza featuring the Rhett Walker Band and Duck Dynasty's Godwin. We'll be giving away two pairs of tickets over the next couple sports reports, and one lucky winner will be upgraded to VIP tickets to the event. To enter, just email Andy at alynch at wtlw.com, or you can tweet Andy at andylynch44. We'll announce the nightly winner later on in tonight's show, and then draw for the VIP ticket winner Saturday, December 21st, which, of course, is the night before the show. For more information on the Rhett Neck Christmas Extravaganza, Check out their website, retnetchristmas.com. Time now for our nightly trivia question as presented by Meyer. Experience the savings, experience the difference Meyer. Just go to WSN.TV, you'll see the Meyer logo on the front page of the question listed. 
Click there to submit your answer. Tonight's winner receives a $5 gift card to Westgate Lanes in Lima. The nightly winners entered into the weekly prize drawing the $25 Meyer gift card. And all the winners will get a shot at the grand prize $250 Meyer gift card. That drawing coming at the end of the high school basketball season. Tonight's question, according to LCCGirlsBasketball.com, who is the Lady T-Birds all-time leading scorer in basketball? Just go to WOSN.TV to submit your answer. We'll announce the winner at the end of tonight's show. Taking a look at the weather, the warm-up is here, although the precipitation will stick around. Highs in the upper 40s and lower 50s for the weekend with heavy rains expected, which could lead, which has led, I should say, to flood watches issued throughout the area. Things cooled down during the daytime hours on Sunday, leading to the rain-snow mix. Things will dry out and cool down for Monday and Tuesday with highs in the upper 20s. Doesn't look like we'll be getting the white Christmas this season. We are just getting started on the sports board. Up next, more girls hoops highlights. We head to the MAC and the NWCC when the Hoopster's Choice runs the fast break. From the TV44 studios, it's the Lima Memorial Health System Sports Report with Andy Lynch and Mark Kuntz. Local sports, local heroes. Four teams tied atop the MAC girls basketball standings with 2-0 league marks, including Minster and their opponents this evening, Versailles. Tigers coming off their first loss of the season, non-conference defeat Tuesday night at Bath, a game you saw last night on WOSN. And with the Minster Wildcats leading Versailles, no reason for Roger Pokey to hide his face, as maybe that Cleveland Brown sweater is a reason to hide your face. So third quarter, Tigers fall back. Brooke Pottis to Emily Harmon ties the game up. At Versailles on the fat. Rachel Kramer wins and a win as Versailles goes up by two. Kramer playing some tough defense as well. Comes up with the steal. And that leads to Krista Putoff down low, up and in. 25 21. Wildcats hanging in there. Kayla Richard with the baseline drive finishes off glass, making it a one possession game. Close game the entire way. But Versailles remains perfect in league play as they pick up the four point win on the road. 40 the 36. Marion Local in Anna, non-conference game. Flyers trying to remain unbeaten. Tight game in the second quarter. Flyers down three. Emily Mesher, the state volleyball champ, scores, making it a one-point game. And it's Lexi Wilker finding Brooke winner. Flyers grab the one-point advantage, 15-14. But Anna reloads. Avery Benzman drives, dishes to Kayla Benzman. Eyes it flies it. Three is good. Rockets in front by two. Flyers matching Anna, bucket for bucket. Wilker to measure, retime the game at 17. Late in the second quarter, that Benzman connection again as Kayla hits from outside. And then right before half, Holly Boyd plays beat the buzzer and wins a three from the top of the key. Anna up six at the half, but Marion Local would rally and the Flyers get the victory at home, 55-47. NWCC Perry taking on Sydney Lehman. Commodores up 19 13, second quarter in transition. Lexi Davis, the state high jump champ, gets the bucket. Other end, nice bounce pants inside. Jenna Cronenberger finishes strong for the Cavaliers. Off the miss now. Perry's Alexis Young gets the rebound, goes back up with it, gets the second effort to fall. Perry defenders defending the command center. But Julia Harrelson finds the advantage, gets the floater to fall. Harrelson then on the floor finds Cassie Lee. Madeline Franklin hits the two, and Lehman gets the victory on the road, 62-51. to 51. Final girl stop of the evening, Jessica Lidke's Pandora Gilboa Rockets leading hard northern big in the first quarter. Hunter Hillner 
pass to flex to Shea Watkins, right place at the right time, lays it in. 19 0 PG in front. More from the Rockets. Mackenzie Swarry, the long pass to Olivia Mag over to Watkins. Deep two makes it 21 0 Pandora Gilboa. No shutout tonight, though. Polar Bears Holly Wilson goes inside to Kylie Hooker, gets the shot down low to put Hard Northern on the board. Her Miller then to Brianna Hovis. Another long 223 to 2 PG in front. Still first quarter action. Wilson drives, runner falls. 25-4, Hard, Hard Northern trailing. Polar Bears go inside to Brooklyn Watts as the Rockets. Big shot there by Anna Abalovska. It's all PG tonight. Rockets win 65-23. to Don't forget, you can follow us on Twitter, AndyLynch44, MarkCoons44 for breaking news, updates from games, and so much more. 44 halftime scores provide updates on Friday night to the football season and the basketball season because that is the season now. WOSN Air Schedule alerts you when games are airing and the Golden Megaphone is the account of the Fans of the Week Golden Megaphone. That's some interesting stuff being tweeted out by the Golden Megaphone and tweeted at the Golden Megaphone. So follow us on Twitter, like us on Facebook, and check out the homepage, WOSN.tv. Up next, OIO Prep Profile. Ada's Matt Wilcox coming off a fantastic senior season on the gridiron. Prepares to get back in the pool as he seeks a fourth trip to the state meet. This story more in the Swimmer's Choice goes for a PR. Believe it or not, the state swimming meet is less than nine weeks away. Action begins February 19th in Canton. Ada's Matt Wilcox hoping to swim his way to the Brandon Natatorium for a fourth straight year. But first, the NWC Scholar Athlete is this week's featured athlete in the OIO Prep Profile. Ada's Matt Wilcox has been swimming for as long as he can remember. Close to 14 years. When I was really young, I just I, I actually skipped swim lessons and went straight into the into practices because I, I was swimming in my backyard pool a little bit, and my parents just threw me into the pool and to right into competition swimming, and it, it just took off from there. This past fall, Wilcox took off as a football player, leading the Bulldogs into the playoffs and a share of the NWC title. The senior was named second team All State for Division Six and was the All Conference quarterback. Oh, I wasn't thinking about swimming at all during the football season. And honestly, I just wanted to keep going further, um, keep advancing into the playoffs just because, I mean, I didn't want my high school season to end. So um, when we when we did end our season, the third round of playoffs, I, I was bummed that I, had to know, uh, that I had to get in the pool now to swim. So uh, it, it's still a, a big transition that I still got to work on. It takes, it takes a long time to get in shape for swimming because there's nothing else really out there to, to get you in shape for swimming other than being in the pool. So going from, I mean, wearing pads and running every day uh, to in the water, it takes, I mean, it, at least a few months of hard training, uh, sometimes two times a day, most of the week. We do uh, two practices a day to try and get in shape by the time state rolls around. So it, it, takes, it takes a while. It's a big adjustment, but it's fun. I like the challenge, so it, it's, always, it's always interesting every year. I'd say at the beginning of swim season, I'm a football player who swims, but by the end of it, um, hopefully you wouldn't be able to tell that I play football too much. So uh, that's the goal is to, it's to look like a swimmer by the end of the year. As a swimmer who also plays football, Wilcox has a unique insight as to what the state swim meet is like. I would compare it to something like a, f a Friday night football playoff game. Uh, it's, it's so hyped up in there. Uh, everybody's ready to go. Everybody's everybody's feeling um, the tension, feeling the pressure, and I mean, um, once you get down to it, once you're behind the blocks, 
just the feeling that you get about to dive into the pool is, is something like nothing else. Wilcox swam in three events of the state meet last season, finishing fourth in the 50 free, and wants to add to his hardware this season. Um, just to top what I did last year, uh, hopefully come out with a better time, a personal best by the end of the year, and um, maybe come out with a better place at state. Um, and I also like to get another event in there other than the 50 free. I'm not sure about the relays because we did lo lose two seniors this past year. So we do definitely have big expectations going in for this my senior year. Great story there. Well, the coaching carousel continues to spin in college football. Bowling Green introducing their new head coach this morning, Dino Babers. And it appeared as if Ohio State's coaching staff would remain intact for a remarkable third straight season. But this afternoon, footballscoop.com reporting Ohio State co-defensive coordinator and safeties coach Everett Withers will be the next head coach at FCS level James Madison. Withers, who was North Carolina's interim head coach in 2011, is the only Buckeye head coach without, or Buckeye assistant coach without direct ties to Ohio. Reportedly, would be taking a significant pay cut. Columbus Dispatch's Tim May reporting negotiations are going on between Withers and James Madison, but nothing official at this hour. Speaking of Ohio State, much more on the Buckeyes and the Orange Bowl coming up in less than two weeks as Buckeye Insider, presented by QP, heads to Florida. Join Garrett C. right now, along with other guests, for three Buckeye Insider half-hour shows leading up to the Buckeyes Orange Bowl game against Clemson. While the half-hour show on WOSN, both Monday the 30th and Tuesday the 31st at 9 p.m., as well as another half-hour QP Buckeye Insider, Thursday, January 2nd at 10 p.m. on WTLW, plus plenty of content on our website, WOSN.TV, on the Buckeye Insider page. We'll need to take a quick timeout straight ahead, hit the match. Big WBL Super Try meets tonight in the light in St. Mary's when the Grappler's Choice goes for the takedown. The Bath Wildcats with an impressive showing last Saturday at the Allen County Wrestling Meet. Wildcats taking home the title with a 115-point cushion over second place St. John's as six different Wildcats won their weight classes with five more Bath wrestlers either in second or third place. Wildcats back in the WBL grind tonight wrestling at Elida, part of a league super try meet along with Wapkaneta and Kenton. And the Bath Wildcats would take on Wapak in the first round while Elida took on Kenton. We'll start with Elida and Kenton, 170 pounds. Bulldogs, Micah Hartman taking on Ken's Jeremy Contreras. Hartman with the second period pin. Move up to 195 pounds and now it's Kenton's Silas Smith pinning Elida's Tyler Smith as he gets both shoulder blades down on the mat. Move up to 220 pounds and now Kenton's Austin Near taking on Noah Meeker. Near gets the reversal, would go on and pin Meeker. Finally, 113 pounds, Blaine Hunter all over Keith Hauser as Hunter would win 22 to seven. Bath and Wapak now 160 pounds. Caleb Hoffman against Zach Garrett. Hoffman with the reversal takes the lead. We go to overtime. Tied at six in the overtime session and Zach Garrett gets control and picks up the victory for Bath 8-6 as they go up three nothing in the match. 170 pounds now. Riker Rabbler taking on Tyler Dulbold. Late in the second, Dulbon with the reversal to get on the board, but in the third period, Riker Robley comes up with the pin as Bath leading in the match over Wapkanata. Finally, 182 pounds after a scoreless first period. Early in the second, Heath Newman for Wapak gets the escape on Easton Rudisell to take the 1-0 lead, but Rudisell would win at 2-1. No takedowns in this particular match as Rudisell got his points on a stalling and an escape. If you take a look at the team results, 
Bath with a big win over Wapkaneta, 46-27, while Elida defeats Kenton, 41-36. In the second rounds of matches, Bath remains perfect on the night as they get the 62-9 win over Kenton, and Wapak bounces back with the 55-12 win over Elida. Two mats of action in St. Mary's. We'll start with Defiance and Salina. 170-pound Blue Zach Bosak would go on to win 6-3. 182 pounds Cody Salimmer from Salina. Needed just a minute and 10 to get his pin. Move up to 195. Defiance is Eli Osborne with the takedown two points. Osborne goes on to win at 12-4. 220-pound weight class. Blue Dogs building on the lead. Evan Troop gets the pin for Defiance. Meanwhile, St. Mary's taking on Shawnee, 160 pounds. Rough Riders' Jonathan Vogel picks up two points, but the Indians' Chandler Colehorse picks up some back points, would go on for an 18-4 victory. 170 pounds now, St. Mary's Ryan Slife, two quick points. And then a minute and three seconds left, Slife gets the fall, gets the pin, and gets the points for St. Mary's. 182 now, Luke Lemmerman, good soccer player, good wrestler, two points in route to an 11-5 win for the Rough Rider, and finally at 195 pounds, more from St. Mary's. Spencer now 60 seconds for the pins, as St. Mary's gets the win over Shawnee, 43 to 25. Meanwhile, defiance the victory over Salina, 52 to 15. In the second rounds, it's Shawnee picking up the win over Salina, and defiance, they were 2-0 today as they get the win over St. Mary's. Of course, you can now watch live on WOSN 93.1 The Fan Sports Talk with Coza, hosted by Vince Coza, every Monday through Thursday from 5 to 6.30. Coza interviews guests, but will also take your calls and texts. Sports Talk with Coza on WOSN live Monday through Thursday from 5 to 6.30 and replayed each of those nights at 10 o'clock on WOSN. We finished strong with a dip in the pool. Wapkinetta hosting tonight, plus your Meyer Trivia winners when the sports report returns. Rumblings out of Auglaize County have Wapakoneta perhaps looking to change their nickname from the increasingly politically incorrect Redskins to perhaps a name that would honor native son Neil Armstrong, the first man to walk on the moon. Maybe they'll call the swim team the Splashdowns? Wapakoneta hosting a tri-meet today. We'll start with the boys 200 medley relay, and it's the host Redskins, Caleb Miller touching home at 153-16. Adam Jerzyk and Van Wert in second, followed by the Shawnee Indian place. Girls 200 free now, and it's Shawnee's Aaliyah Hicksonball Golden in 207.83 as Wapak's Josie Miller and Taylor Hager go 2 and 3. Boys turn at the 200 free. Charlie Sutton swimming in his home pool, touches the wall first, 154.17. Shawnee's Joey Ellis in second, followed by teammate Noah Curl in third place. Girls 200 IM, the individual medley. Wapak Sierra Salmons winning her second race of the night. Also helped win the medley relay. Teammate Haley Kinsel in second with Van Wert's Carlin Coots taking third place. Boys I am now. And it's Van Wert's Eric Easley winning easily. 209.38. Wapak Hayden Metzger in second with Shawnee's Tri Briggs bronzing. Finally, the girls 50. State medalist Emily Murphy. She takes first place. 24.76 seconds her time. Jordan Law from Wapak in second with Maya Hager finishing in third in that particular event. As we take a look at the team results, starting with the ladies, Wapakoneta gets the victory over Shawnee while the Indians top Van Wert and Wapak getting the win over uh, Van Wert. As we said, meanwhile for the guys, we've got Shawnee 
sweeping, getting wins over Wapak and Van Wert, and Wapakoneta getting the win over Van Wert. Well, time now for our Meyer Trivia answer on the line. A $5 gift card to Westgate Lanes, plus an entry to the weekly and grand prize drawings for Meyer gift cards. We ask you who has scored the most points in LCC girls basketball history. The answer, according to lccgirlsbasketball.com, Jill Downing, 1,207 points in her career. Our winner, Ryan Miller from Kenton. Congratulations. We'll get that Westgate Lanes gift certificate in the mail as we take a look at last week's $25 Meyer gift card winner. And that's going to go to Dan Rump from Ottawa. And finally, one more thing to give out tonight, Daniel Joseph from Convoy. He gets the pair of tickets to the Retinet Christmas Extravaganza, and he'll be in the drawing on Saturday night for the VIP tickets. Lots of great stuff coming up tomorrow night, 44 on 44. Hope you'll join us then as well. Highlights from close to 20 area high school basketball games leading up to the Lima Senior Finley and the Salina OG games. Mark Shine will stop by while the top five plays of the week and gymnastics highlights. Don't want to miss that Friday night at 10 on the Sports Report. Thanks for joining us tonight. We'll see you then.